Hi students, this is Alex here. In this video, we are going to verify the Gauss divergence theorem for the given f vector over the cube, which is bounded by x is equal to plus or minus 1, y is equal to plus or minus 1, and z is equal to plus or minus 1. Let's write the Gauss divergence theorem, which is double integral over the surface S, yes, f vector dot n cap ds, which is equal to triple integral over the volume V, del dot f vector dv. Now we are going to construct the cube using the boundary x is equal to plus or minus 1, y is equal to plus or minus 1 and z is equal to plus or minus 1. So first let's take a cube. For that first we construct a square and another square of the same size. Then we have to join these vertices to complete the cube. And we have to construct the three dimensional axis mutually perpendicular x, y and z axis and our equations are x is plus or minus 1. So our axis should be somewhere in the middle so that it satisfies the given boundary. So our axis is like this. Now we name this as x, y and z and there is a unit vector i cap along the x j cap along the y and k cap along the z now we have six surfaces so we are going to take the lhs of the gauss divergence theorem which is double integral over the surface s yes, f vector dot n cap ds and this is made into six part. Let's start from the bottom surface. This bottom surface equation is z is equal to minus 1. And this top surface equation is z is equal to 1. So first we write double integral f vector dot when I take n cap for this bottom surface, it is going in the downward direction and it is opposite direction of the k. So it is f dot minus k cap and ds is nothing but we have x and y values. So this is our x value for this surface and this is our y value for our surface. So it is basically dx dy. In the same way, if it consider the top surface, it is double integral f vector and now it is top surface is having n cap in the upward direction. So it is k cap. Again, this is dx dy and for this, the equation of the surface is z is equal to 1 and this is z is equal to, sorry, this is z is equal to minus 1, this is z is equal to 1. Now coming to the left side. So left side, we have this surface. So this is our left side surface whose equation is y is equal to minus 1. And the right side, we have surface which is y is equal to plus 1. So plus double integral we have f dot when it is going left side it is minus j cap because opposite direction of y and since it is y we have dx and dz. This equation is y is equal to minus 1. Then plus double integral f vector dot j dx dz and this plane equation is y is equal to 1. In the same way we have front and back side two surfaces which is f dot front side it is i cap and its equation of the plane is x is equal to 1 and this will be dy dz 
and double integral f vector dot minus i i cap dy dz and this is x is equal to minus 1 and all the limits varies from minus 1 to plus 1 so let's write the limit also for this integral because everything is from minus 1 to plus 1 so we finish writing all the limits then coming to the first part let us take i1 we take first two integral as i1 f dot minus k this will be y z so minus y z will come so double integral minus y z and there is a minus sign because of that only we have taken the minus sign minus y z then dx dy z is minus 1 so this is into dx dy and z is minus 1 and limit is from minus 1 to 1 minus 1 to 1 and second part is again minus 1 to 1 minus 1 to 1 this will be just y z and dx dy here we get z as 1 so when I substitute z as minus 1 here this becomes only y z when I put z as 1 here then I will get sorry even here it is only y when I put z as minus 1 it is only y integral minus 1 to 1 minus 1 to 1 dx dy and even here when I put z as 1 it is just y so minus 1 to 1 integral minus 1 to 1 y dx dy we can combine this as a 2y so 2 is a constant which can be taken out and we have y dx dy so first we have to evaluate this integral with respect to x so it means y is a constant so 2 integral minus 1 to 1 and this will be y into x and we have to substitute the limit which is from minus 1 to 1 then we left with dy so when I use a limit 1 minus of minus 1 plus 1 so it will become 2y then minus 1 to 1 and there is a 2 outside this is with respect to y now this is 4 y square by 2 and limit is from minus 1 to 1 so it is 1 by 2 minus of when I square it will become plus 1 so again 1 by 2 so finally this answer is 0 in the same way we are going to take the next two term as i2 so i2 is having double integral from minus 1 to 1 minus 1 to 1 f dot minus j so when I take minus j it is only z so f dot minus j is minus z and it is d x d z d x d z and the value of y is minus 1 the equation of the plane and here once again minus 1 to 1 minus 1 to 1 and this will be z dx dz and y is 1 there is no y to substitute and both are opposite sign so it gets cancelled it becomes 0 when I take it as a sing single integration minus z and plus z will become 0 now coming to i3 the last two terms minus 1 to 1 minus 1 to 1 and we have dot i which is x square so x square into dy dz x square into dy dz and the equation is x is equal to 1 here similarly the next part is limit minus 1 to 1 minus 1 to 1 
x square dy dz there is a minus sign because it is minus i and the x value is minus 1. So when I substitute 1 here it will be minus 1 to 1 integral minus 1 to 1 integral dy dz and when I put minus 1 here but after squaring so what happens is it become plus but still there is a minus sign outside. So this becomes minus of dy dz. So both are same with opposite sign it gets cancelled. So totally in LHS i1 plus i2 plus i3 which is 0. So all the three values are 0. Now coming to the right hand side of the Gauss divergence theorem we have triple integral del dot f vector dv. So we are going to write that separately RHS triple integral over v del dot f vector and dv. So here we have triple integral del is i cap into dou by dou x plus j cap into dou by dou y plus k cap into dou by dou z with this dot of f which is taken from the question this whole thing and uh, we have dv which is dx dy dz and corresponding limits are from minus 1 to plus 1 for x y and z. Now the first part when I do dot product of i and i dou by dou x of x square which is 2x and j dot j that will be dou by dou y of z which is 0 and third one k dot k dou by dou z of y z is z is 1 and the constant y will stay as it is. So we have integral with respect to dx dy dz and limit from minus 1 to plus 1. Now the first part we are going to integrate this with respect to x. It means 2x square by 2 plus yx and the limit for x is from minus 1 to 1. Still we have minus 1 to 1 and minus 1 to 1 outside dy dz. When I put x as 1 here this will become 1 plus y. So this we have to integrate with respect to y as an x part and the rest of the terms are as it is. So we are going to integrate this with respect to y. So this becomes and we have to substitute the lower limit also once again. So minus when I put lower limit minus 1 whole square which is 1 and when I put minus 1 this is minus y. So we have minus 1 to 1 and minus 1 to 1 this is dy dz. Now after subtraction 1 gets cancelled we get 2y. So 2y integral minus 1 to 1 integral minus 1 to 1 dy and dz. So this 2y is odd function we can directly write it as 0 that is when f of y is 2y f of minus y is minus 2y which is minus f of y. It means it is an odd function. When it is an odd function we have a property integral minus a to a f of x dx becomes 0. So when we integrate this, this becomes 0. Since this becomes 0, totally the entire value becomes 0. It means the entire RHS is 0. So LHS equal to RHS now. Hence, 
we can say gauss divergence theorem is verified